Hey, this is UIM, and thanks for watching my Iron Level 3 Hunter Guild Guide. Now, I know that this guide is not going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination, and that it'll likely change in the future. I'll mention some changes that could occur. And again, there's probably some more optimization that can be done here. Obviously, I got slightly spooned because I finished the Hunter Guild collection log in 240 rumors which were primarily all master rumors. So I'm fortunate that I got the Quetzin at 111 rumor complete. So that is really nice because I'm about four mil post Hunter XP now. And I can't really imagine myself doing any more Hunter rumors to try to chase this pet. But I do like the herbivore and chin hunt for those pets. So kind of glad that I got this Hunter pet because if I was going to get spooned anything, I was hoping it would be this one, because this isn't really something I enjoy all that much. The reason that I did it is because I wanted to get the Guild Hunter outfit as kind of a completion to all skilling outfits possible that I could obtain, and also all of the other Hunter outfits, because as I was doing this, I made them and put them into my POH as kind of a collection thing that I wanted to do, even though there was no collection logs for it. Now... The Hunter Guild itself is located in the New Continent. I'm not going to go into all that. I'm also not really going to discuss the travel transportation all that much. There's a simple guide that I'll link in the bottom that'll help you learn how to unlock all of these. But essentially, once you've done some quests, you want to be able to unlock all of the various travel methods. Now, it requires you to complete Hunter Rumors in order to get the ingredients that help you unlock and build some of these other transportation locations to unlock, which are helpful. Now, when I say Hunter Rumor, I want to specify what it means for some of you who may be confused. Essentially, it's a contract. It's a contract in which you say, okay, Hunter, Guild Hunter Master, what do you want me to do? It's kind of like Slayer. You have different Slayer Masters. You have different Hunter Masters. And each Guild Hunter Master can give you different assignments. Now, the cool part about that is that not all of them give you the same hunter creatures. And let's talk about the guild itself. Because you're going to constantly be coming back here to get a new contract, aka rumor, you're going to want to have to have a fast way to get here. Because if you go somewhere far away, you want to be able to get back here. Fortunately, I have the hunter cape, and if you take the hunter cape over to Guildmaster Apatura, you can have her unlock unlimited teleports to the Hunter Guild. Now, it is unlimited, but if you utilize all of your teleports for Felda Pills or the Wilderness, then it obviously won't be for 24 hours or however long the cool set is. But otherwise, you can just teleport here unlimited, and that's actually really beneficial. The main reason it's beneficial now that the Hunter Cape has that perk is because there is actually a new farming patch here. So, technically, you have unlimited teleports to this farming patch. Now, there is a thing called a Quetzal Whistle, which essentially has one of those giant birds come pick you up and bring you right to the guild. It does not bring you right to this location of the Hunter Guild, but to the Quetzal that's right here. So, technically, the Whistle is closer to the farming patch, but you do have to keep it charged with meat, and you don't get the perfected Quetzal Whistle, which has 100 charges able to be stored in it at a time immediately you have to do 250 rumors or get lucky and spoon some of the different patterns or the blueprints to make them which you can get and you can also get duplicates of those which is kind of annoying now in the hunter guild you really you have imia and imia has everything you need hunter supply wise as a store and then you also have a bank that's right here just a banker they don't have a name and you can only, essentially, if you're a UIM, get out the meat that are used to charge the Quetzal Whistles at a bank. So unfortunately, there really isn't a whole lot of value of the large meat pouch for UIM, nor is there for the large fur pouch for UIM long term. But if you are an iron, you can continue to empty the meat into your bank. And obviously that meat can be used to continually charge your Quetzal Whistle, which means yeah, you're going to have a closer teleport to the farming patch and long term. Now, how you get that meat is when you're actually hunting the different hunter creatures. 
let's go down to the bottom of the guild and let's talk about blocks. So there's really two major things that the wiki will say, which is that of all of these different guild hunters that are, are different levels, and there's many of them, that you should probably do experts because experts are the most per hour. That, however, that is for regular mains, right? Because mains can get over to where Kebits are a lot faster, especially normal accounts that can trade because they can just buy teleport scrolls and easy peasy, just a little bit of GP, and you don't have to worry about those tasks. Now, as level three, that's not the case because running all the way to Kebits is not a fun experience. Gray chins and some other things that are over there. We can find other better, better places to hunt those. But let's just be honest. We don't want to deal with Kevits. So the best master for us as level threes is specifically iron. I'm not sure about normals because they can just buy things, but uh, is master. So iron level threes, I believe master wolf is the best guild hunter to take rumors from. The other reason why he's also a great guild hunter, and specifically the one that I chose, is because he doesn't give a ton of hunter creatures. He essentially just gives red salamanders, red chinchampas, sunlight moths, dashing kebits, sunlight antelopes, moonlight moths, heku salamanders, herbivore, and moonlight antelope. Now, if you don't have 91 hunter, he won't even give you moonlight antelope which is awesome. And if you don't have 80, he won't even give you herbivore. And if you don't want to take the red chin chompas because you already have the chin pet, then you can take on red salamanders. However, if you want to block almost all kebits, he's the perfect master for it because one of these experts, well, either of them, can take on and give you either the dashing kebit as a task or a sunlight antelope. So actually how blocks work is all of these hunters can give you rumors simultaneously and whichever one you switch to is your active rumor. So what you're doing by blocking in this is instead of like a block list where you just use Quetzal feed to unlock, you know, or block certain um, hunter creatures that you don't want rumors of, what you do is you get what you want blocked in any of these guild hunters until um, yeah all your blocks are set up so for example my hunter master gilman which is the only novice has red salamanders block because i don't actually want to do red sallies i don't have the chin pet i don't mind red chins and then i'm gonna have to take on sunlight moths i'm gonna have to take on moonlight moths and even moonlight antelope and they're all close right here so i don't really mind that much however I am able to and did block the dashing Kebit because Aiko and Teko both can take that. So one of them is holding an active task that it took a while to set up of the dashing Kebit. So that means I get zero Kebits because Wolf doesn't assign any Kebits other than dashing Kebit, which I have blocked by one of the guild hunters. And if one of the guild hunters has it, then the other guild hunter can't give it to you. So. I also have sunlight antelopes blocked because I don't really mind doing antelopes, but you're going to have to choose one. And I decided to go with moonlight since it's close and near here to the back of the, the guild. And honestly, I don't really mind it all that much. So what ends up happening in the case of all my blocks being set up and the adepts don't really matter all that much because they don't really need to block much because wolf doesn't give you a whole lot of different hunter creatures is red chins, sunlight moths, Moonlight Moths, Heku Salamander, Herbivore, and Moonlight Antelope. Now for Red Shins, it's going to be really nice to have the Ring of Elements because you can use the Air Altar and you can go to Corsair's Cove and then take the little Agility Shortcut right into the Hunter Badge. That's a pretty fast way to get to Fell the Pills if you have, um, if you have the Red Shin task. If you have an Herbivore task, you can just teleport to the Earth Altar and run over to Fossil Island that way pretty easily as a level three as well. So it's kind of nice having both of those. The Moonlight Moths and the Moonlight Antelopes are actually just south here, so they're pretty close. The only one that can be a little bit difficult to get to is the Teku Salamander. So let's talk about the Teku Salamander. One thing more to mention, 
before we talk about the salamander and the unlocks of the traveling system and what you should prioritize is that guild scribe verity will allow you to use settings to enable back-to-back -back hunter rumors when you're setting up your blocks ensure that she does not give you back to back because you don't want one that you're trying to get to away from to the one that you want to block with coming back to back. So enable them after you have all of them blocked. So that way you can get, for example, two Teku Salamanders back to back, which isn't too bad, or two Herbivores, or Herbivore, 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 or Red Shins, Red Shins, Red Shins. So that's something I prefer to enable. Now, there is a NPC up here that'll give you your basic Quetzal Whistle, Leader Petri, and he'll give it to you at 10 rumors completed. And then you'll have the blueprints to craft the first one. Upgrading the other Quetzal Whistles is either going to come from getting lucky when you open up one of the Hunter's Loot Sacks, which is the reward that you get, basically a sack every single time you complete one that has a bunch of different rewards in it, and has a 1 in 50 chance of giving you a piece of headwear or gear as well as the huntman's kit and a one in 1000 ch pet chance at the quetzal but essentially you can also get a one in 50 drop of an enhanced quetzal whistle blueprint or a perfected quetzal whistle blueprint so those are also one in 50 which means you do not have to get 250 rumors done to get the perfected Quetzal Whistle. That's actually not true. You can get a 1 in 50 drop and get lucky. And I actually did get duplicates of those, which is kind of annoying. But essentially, whenever you open up a Hunter's Loot Sack, it doesn't really matter what level it is. That's the rate for them. Now, each of those Hunter Loot Sacks, I'm completing them, will also give you basically Quetzal Fee. And to get back to what we're talking about before I talk about the perfected Quetzal is that that Quetzal feed, 10 of them, is what is used to unlock each area that you can for traveling with Renu. Now, Renu, in my case, for Varlamore, everything is unlocked because I used 40, essentially 40 Quetzal feed. Now, you usually only get maybe one to five every single Hunter rumor. From one of the hunter's loot sacks so you may not even get one but you'll get you know maybe one to five quetzal feed and ten quetzal feed means you can unlock one because of the way that the hunter guild hunter master as wolf is set up the one i would unlock first is cam torm entrance because that is the closest to the teku salamanders and you already will have the teal mat unlocked so you can just run down there and unlock it once and then never have to worry about it again the other ones aren't really all that important. I unlocked them every single time I got 10. The other one I'd say is kind of nice, depending on if you wanted to take the Sunlight Antelope instead, is the Outer Fortress, because this will take you pretty close to the Sunlight area, which is right here. So you can get to the Sunlight Antelopes pretty quickly from that. Obviously, the travel to Cam Torm entrance is the best, because otherwise you'd have to run from all the way here, all the way around down this entire area past here to get to the Teku Salamander versus this one is right here where all the uh, young trees are to set your traps. Now, if you're anywhere not near the guild, basically what the Quetzal Whistle allows you to have is the ability to see what your current active rumor is. Right now I don't have any. Or be able to signal to get picked up by one of, I guess it's just a giant Renew or Quetzal, and be taken to the guild. Now the benefit, obviously, of the whistle is that you're closer to the farming patch, which is one of the best benefits of the new Hunter Guild, is actually being near this farming patch. And the unlimited teleports with the Hunter Cape now actually having more value, or the actual whistle. Now I prefer actually using the cape. I don't mind this little gap. But if you wanted to be very efficient, you could, and you could just continue to charge the Quetzal Whistle with meat. Now, this brings me to the two pouches. If you are a UIM, these pouches are basically pointless. I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't drop them yet because I wanted to make this guide. But they're basically useless because they don't really add that much value because you get 
from the Hunter's Loot Sack. Noted raw pyre fox and raw kayak meat. And so you actually can get noted meat to unnote and charge the whistle with. So you don't even really need the pouch. Now, if you're an iron that obviously has a bank, then maybe it's worth it because you can fill it up with meat and then you can empty it out in your bank and you just kind of have unlimited charges for your Quetzal whistle. So that's one reason you might want to is definitely if you're an iron level three, that's a banker. The fur pouch has a lot less use in my opinion. I don't know why people would actually use this, but I only used it in the very beginning. Now to make these pouches, essentially you have to actually hunt things to get them. So for the small meat pouch, you need to actually hunt the fox fur, get the fox fur from hunting the fox pyres. And they're like over, or pyre foxes. They're over here. So those are really easy to get your first little small meat pouch. There's only two forms, small and large. So after you have the small one, then you can essentially go kill or get three sunlight antelope fur from that other location over here. And you can upgrade it to the large meat pouch. This one is really beneficial if you're trying to keep your Quetzal Whistle and keep it charged. The large fur pouch is, I mean, it's kind of pointless because the small fur pouch comes from the Lorupia fur. I did get all of the different hunter outfits because, well, I wanted to have them and they could all get stored in my POH. So I thought I might as well. So you'll hunt a Lorupia. And that'll get you the small fur pouch. And then for the medium fur pouch, you can hunt three groks or get grok fur. They have to be the nicer ones. And then after you have the medium fur pouch, you can upgrade to the large fur pouch. And that's going to come from three kayak fur. Now, the reason why I think that it's still fun to go for those is during that time, I was also getting all of the hunter outfits just so that I could store them here in my POH for collectionist purposes because you can store them as you see right here the grok set and the larupia set and then also in the actual i think in the cape rack you can also store spottier yep you can store spotted and the spottier uh, capes as well so i don't know if that's something you want to go for but i wanted to have the everything that i could from hunter so I figured I would keep the pouch and then I realized I really never use it and could care less about it. Now, another benefit, especially as a UIM early on, is if you get the Huntsman's Kit. The Huntsman's Kit essentially functions like a little mini bank that lets you keep all of these items in here and even move them around. I wish you could do that with a looting bag, honestly. It drives me nuts that you can't from when I put in something wrong. But what's cool about this is it also stacks. So you can have, you know, a ton of box traps, a ton of different small fishing nets and ropes. These are all the items that I use the entire time. I have 99 Hunter, so I'm able to catch the sunlight and uh, moonlight moths without a net because I can just bare hand them and I don't need the jars and I don't get anything from them anyways. So I don't really have to worry about that. I believe the lower one is 65 and the higher one is 75. So I believe if you have 8500, you should be able to barehand them. I'm not 100% sure though, but it is nice not having to use those jars or those nets. You can get them from EMEA here though, of course, and you can store them in here. Now the teasing stick and the kayak outfit, the reason why I bring the kayak outfit is because whenever you're hunting antelopes, if you're not wearing the kayak, outfit you can get hit for higher hits but if you are wearing it then you can only get hit for i believe the max hit is a two so it actually does help when you're hunting them but keeping it wearing it only is kind of pointless i don't have any of my graceful on but usually i would have my graceful cape and my graceful gloves and then i had my graceful boots basically i'd swap out any item with graceful until i completed everything that i wanted and also what I did is I set these to shift so that I could quickly throw them in here. And of course, you know, any item that's in here, you can actually also set these right with the swap so that you could just say, well, give me five, five, right? One click each or deposit, you know, not 
why I actually just always use them. So like what I would do is, is I would just pull them out and then I would just use it and it'll put all of them in there. But it's kind of nice to set that to a custom. Like I just want five box traps, right? And then you can put them all in there when you're done. So I think that covers everything. I'm not going to actually be keeping the large meat pouch or the um, large fur pouch because I'm not going to be doing these anymore. Now it says if you destroy it, you lose all content stored within, which means you have to reobtain it and everything. That's fine by me. I am not going to be using these ever again. And technically I have, I think, 100 charges on this or 47 charges on this. So I could probably fill this up and use this Quetzal Whistle, but I don't really care because at the end of the day, I have the Hunter Cake and that's all I really need. I don't really need the perfect efficiency. Now, the only reason I'm keeping my Huntsman's Kit is because currently there is Guild Hunter Ornus and he's wearing what looks awfully similar to this Huntsman's Kit. So I don't know why it's not equipable and wearable because that would be kind of nice. Maybe just add on a couple of those extra items like the spade or something. I don't know what's on there, but it would be really nice if we could wear this just like the forestry basket or whatever backpack and then also be able to store it in the POH in the same place that the forestry kit is stored. So I'm hopeful that they're going to eventually make the Huntsman's kit storable until then I can keep it in death storage, etc. I don't really care all that much. And then obviously you'll have your hunter cape. You can have it being you know, in your inventory, reset it to be the teleport is the click and then just use three key or you can wear it. That way you can at least boost your hunter whenever you want to um, and then have it also be teleport. So it's up to you. I personally like having it in my inventory when I was doing this. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to put this in there because I have no other use for it. Okay. So I think that that's pretty much all there is to know about Hunter Rumors. I will include the all of the clips of essentially each rumor. I did separate little specific things to make it kind of easy for me so that I could essentially do the rumors fairly quickly. Uh, but I would heavily recommend having the Ring of Elements for the Earth and the Air Altar, if your POH is at the Air Altar and you don't have the Con Cape. And then I didn't really use the Xerix Talisman too much, but once in a while, if I needed some meat, whenever I, or some meat, some chocolate cakes, I would just quickly teleport, instead of having another cape like the Arty Cloak, I would just teleport to the uh, heart and then get them from the stall and just make them real quickly. So if I ever ran out, if I needed the space or whatnot, obviously I don't need them. So that's pretty much it. It's as easy as that. Um, there isn't really much more to say. I will say you do get quite a bit of bird nest noted. So I got almost 700, which was actually really nice because it's a UIM. The only way to get them is from doing birdhouse runs. And so getting the nest, the noted ones is nice for Sarah Brews. But I think 99 Herblore is like 60,000, you know, bird nest. But I'm a pretty, like, I don't put a lot of um, hours in with the game. So the fact that I got to 700 with, with only 240 means that somebody who really farms could honestly probably farm these to get 60,000 bird nest and then just do six, you know, get farm 60,000 toad flax and do 99 Herblore via that. However, there's the Herblore stuff that's coming out on Varlamore in the future, so I don't really think that I'm going to be doing any more rumors now that I have it completed. So I will show first the Moonlight Moth rumor, and with this rumor, what you can see is I have tagged the specific moths that spawn in close proximity so that I can essentially just wait for the spawn and click them and get them done very quickly some people will just randomly run around and essentially try to catch whatever moth is visible and maybe even tag all of them with rune light but i wanted it to be as quick as possible and then also for the sunlight moth it's kind of the same thing and there's not really much more to show to that the quetzal unlock is really nice you're going to have to run from the place that 
all the way at the top and then basically run and get it undone. I would, the first 10 Quetzal feed you get, I would unlock that almost immediately because it's going to benefit you for <laughs> the long haul getting to the Teku Salamanders, which is a really easy spot. And Teku Salamanders are very straightforward. And they're decent XP too. I noticed I was getting actually quite a lot of XP because every single time you turn in a rumor, I was getting, some, I don't know, something like 6k XP as well. Just a nice little drop. So the Hunter XP seems to fly doing this, even though it's maybe not the most enjoyable because it's a little bit repetitive. And yeah. When it comes to the chins, I just basically use the Air Altar Tully with the Ring of Elements. And then I run south and take Corsair's Curve, or sorry, Corsair's Cove. And then once you're on Corsair's Cove, if you go up just a little bit, as long as you have 10 agility, there's some rocks you can climb through. And there's also even a bank there if you need to stop. And then you can just run north and you're right near where the Larupia are. And also, obviously, the Chinchampas that you want to hunt in Felda Pills for the Red Chins. If you need to get to the Kayets or make the Kayet outfit, uh, outfit and the, you know you want to make the fur pouch or whatever, the best way to get there, I found, as a UM level 3, is to actually use the minigame teleport to the Blast Furnace. And then once you're in that location, if you run a little bit north, you can actually take the boat back to the area where the I think there's a dwarf or some kind of travel transport. And if I actually type it, maybe Relica, this will help. Uh, oh, there it is. Why did I mess up? There we go. So it'll actually bring you into the Keldegrim entrance. And then you can just run north right to where the Polar Kebbets are and the Sabertooth Kebbets are and the uh, Sabertooth Kayet are specifically. So in the beginning, you're going to have to do some ones you don't really want to do. And unfortunately, one of those tends to be um, a lot of the the wild kebits, the uh, razorback kebits, and the dark kebits, the spotted kebits, and the dashing kebits. And that's going to be from Falconry and Piscatoris. So you're going to actually have to run past the the giants and everything all the way past north of Eagle's Peak every single time you get one of those, which is really not fun. So setting up the block early is really good. In the future, they have talked about having a transport system that makes it faster to get to that side of the game, even if you don't have, um, yeah, you don't have, I guess, magic or whatever, or the teleport scrolls. If that is the case, then we'll basically, as level threes, probably just follow the exact same block list that's recommended and do experts as an active instead. But otherwise, you should be able to reset all of your your um, blocks at any point in time by switching to any of the hunters and making it active. All right, this guide has been pretty long and really in-depth going over a lot. But I did want to make it for any of you that are confused about it. Hopefully this has been helpful. And if anything, it's hopefully at least a little bit of a start. Hopefully you'll have fun actually doing it. I've seen quite a few others really enjoying it. And honestly, I think it's pretty nice. It's not a bad little update. Keeps Hunter kind of fresh and interesting. And once it's set up, it's actually kind of enjoyable, especially with the Hunter Cape. So, you know, maybe in the future I'll do them if they add some kind of cosmetic to the Quetzal pet. I was kind of hoping that they were going to make like a skin from the of the capybara so that you could like transmog Quetzal into a capybara. But I don't think that they're going to do that. And if they do require something for it, hopefully it won't be a crazy long grind. Um, maybe like 500 or something rumors complete for it or something like that would be kind of cool. But at for now, I really don't plan on using this as a main hunter method. I think as an iron herbivore is still just too strong. A lot of my favorite tasks while doing the rumors were the herbivore tasks anyways, because you do get herbs from that, and that was definitely nice. Okay, hope that helps. Enjoy. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. 
I'll be trying to release some more videos, but I know this is one that's been asked for, and I figured now that I finally completed the log that I would make the video and upload it. Hope you have a great evening, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.